We're going ahead with some SMD projects and the first step was receiving these boards from JLC PCB. Let's have a look at these first. These are for the HS402 oscilloscope project that I introduced in gadgets number 114. They are based on the STM32411 board. I intend to build two versions of this project and they will be made to fit these 80 by 50 by 20 millimeter aluminum boxes but not all of the components have come in yet so we're going to put this uh, project on hold for a while. These boards which are meant to build an HS101 Pro oscilloscope circuit. You will find a link to the Gerber files and the legend for the component position for this board in the description box of this video. For the HS402 board, the link for the Gerber file is in gadgets number 114. These circuits are developed by Martin Lauren and they can be found on his GitHub page. I host them here as a convenience and as a way to avoid the confusion with all of the uh, many other projects. The HS101 Pro is a STM32 F103 blue pill project. It also allows the addition of this HC-06 to convert it to a Bluetooth project which is what we're going to be building here today. With the use of this 90 degree BNC it will be a conventional one channel oscilloscope. But there are times when I like to use these HS101 Pro circuits as part of a gadget, like right in the guts, so that the gadget itself has its own built in oscilloscope. And for that, instead of the BNC, we'll just have a couple of leads in there tying right into the project. The SMD components are going to be soldered with this in syringe solder paste and this 858D rework station. For the headers we're going to be using the Hako FX888D. I'll be using some of this painter's tape to retain the PCB board. So I had a bit of a setback. It looks like this solder paste is expired. I checked and it was ordered 13 months ago. There's no data manufacturer on this. So I ordered this product, Chip Quick from Amazon. Took about a week to get here. By weight, it is eight times more expensive than the other product. This was $20 for 5cc, but it does have a date of manufacture. It was manufactured exactly a month ago. We'll be following this legend as to how to populate this PCB board. And we'll start with this MCP 6S21 gain amplifier. It is a MSOP package, so it's half the size of the 6S21 I demonstrated in gadgets number 87. So there's no stencil. Just apply a little bit of paste with a toothpick. Smear it a little bit. Uh, hope it's not too much because uh, the risk is that there will be bridging. These uh, pins are very close to each other and if it does bridge um, there's really no fixing it. You have to remove it and try again. 300 degrees C. The airspeed is 3. And I'm looking for that solder to transition here. There we go, there we go, it's coming along nice. I like the looks of that. Go over this side a little bit. It's starting to flow here too. A little sign of a bridge right in the center, I hope that goes away. Uh. So I have a bridge on the left hand side here 
And on the other side, I've got a bridge in the center. I've tried to uh, fix it with some flux and reflowing. That didn't work. I'm going to have to remove the chip and try again. I've applied some of this flux to help with the removal of the chip. You know, it's too bad it was just these two little bridges. It was pretty close. Um, it's a lack of experience, and uh, I'm getting some right now. I cleaned up the pads with this wick and repeated the process with perhaps a smidgen less solder paste and the second attempt was successful. There's no bridging on the 6S21. I was able to solder the AMS 1117 1.2 volt regulator. It's a larger chip. Uh, it was easier. The next step is to populate these four components and they're all very close to each other. There's a 910K resistor, 100K, and then a 47 picofarad capacitor, and a puny BAV99 diode. So I'm going to put some solder paste. I'll place all four components, and I'll try to do them in one shot. 330 degrees centigrade. Airspeed is 3. Nozzle diameter is 8 millimeter. That's transitioning. I'm hoping that I'm hoping they find their place. So what's the verdict here? Well, not so bad, I don't think. Uh, the A7, that's the BAV99 diode. Um, just slightly crooked. Uh, it's still sitting on its pads. You know, I'm going to call this a win. I want to bring your attention to this portion of the circuit. This is where we put the AQY210 relay. It would switch in and out of the circuit a 100 nanofarad capacitor to provide hardware based AC coupling. Now normally we would want that feature, pretty cool to have. H-scope activates that relay, um, very cool. But the gadget that I'm going to be putting this circuit in doesn't require AC coupling and you may also wish in your build, if you're just doing an oscilloscope, to go with the software AC coupling that HScope also can provide and eliminate this. The secret to bypassing all that is that where C5 is, this is where the 100 nanofarad capacitor would go, you bridge that. And usually you would do that with a zero ohm resistor. And I was so sure I had one. But I was going from memory, and that's always dangerous. So I'm going to improvise. And I'm just going to cut a short length of lead from a resistor here and solder that where C5 would go. And because C1, which is our 30 picofarad variable capacitor, is so close to this, I'm going to do those two components in one shot. Here's an example where we want to purposely bridge something, so I should be pretty good at that. Okay. 
Here we go. Our final two SMD components is the 10 picofarad at C4 and the 1 kiloohm resistor at R3. Surface tension is supposed to position these things. Let's get that flowing here. Good, right there. There we go, it moved, but it didn't move where I want it. That's a mess. I'm gonna take R3 out of there. Okay. Back in position. Try that again. That's more like it. The HC-06 Bluetooth module was flashed according to the procedure outlined in gadgets number 71. The pins were gently bent upright. Fits on the circuit board like so. 650 degrees Fahrenheit works for me. And then the excess pins were trimmed off. Next step will be to solder the headers. The project has its own square wave generator and it's going to be on this single pin that we soldered here. Here are the two leads that replace the BNC since I plan on using this circuit in the gadget. And being a Bluetooth project it's not going to get powered through the USB so these two leads will go to a lithium power pack. The STM32F103 blue pill was flashed according to the procedure outlined in gadgets number 61. I used HS101 oscilloscope BLT version 10.01 at the time of this build. I think we're ready to fire it up. Some good news, HScope recognized this as an HS101. We're good. Um, there's a problem with the square wave generator. I'm not sure why it's not outputting. I'll uh, put a, an explanation in the description box uh, if I ever find out why at some point. So I'm using an external square wave generator, one kilohertz here. And the whole idea here is to be able to trim the 30 picofarad capacitor here so that we can um, get square corners on the square wave here. Use a plastic screwdriver for this. There, I like that. Calibration is a two-step process in eight scope. You ground the BNC and do a zero volt calibration. Second step to the calibration is to apply a known voltage. I'm using 10 volts. And we're calibrated. I can test it here at 2.5 volts. 
at 5 volts, 7.5 volts, 10 volts. We're golden. I hope you guys enjoyed the build. Look forward to this circuit in the upcoming gadget. We'll catch you guys then.